Hi, thanks for viewing Dr. Linda Kramer. That's me. Okay, today I want to do one, a video that's called How the Heck Do I See Spirit Guides? Okay, now I am going to show, tell you today about what are spirit guides. I will give the definition what they can and can't do. I'm also going to go in with regards to who are they? Is it relatives, angels, etc.? Okay, so that's all coming. I'm also going to give you tools on how to connect with your own spirit guides today. So please stay and watch the whole thing. But before I go into my spirit guide, I've got to actually tell you about someone else that I have around me. This woman has been with me my whole life and she's not a spirit guide because my spirit guide is a huge white owl. So this lady, she comes to me virtually every day now. Whenever I do readings, she gives me information. She's my intuition. She's my premonition because she knows what's going to happen just before it happens. So she warns me to go and do it or to avoid it. So I was up at the pool. Now, this was in late 2019. I took my daughter up to the pool and I was up to about here in the water walking down you know they had the the buoys the buoys or whatever you call them the floaty things to make the lanes so i'm in this lane by myself walking from one end of the pool to the other you know doing my bops and my stretches and trying to look better than i am and anyway i hear linda so i'm looking around at all the people sitting on the side of the pool and no one's looking at me and then I heard Linda again and she was behind me. So when I turned around, here is this woman who's my woman standing in the pool, but there was no water around her. She pointed to me and she said, are you ready? And I said, ready for what? She said, we think you're ready. And it was about two weeks after that that I started seeing spirit guides. So I've been upgraded because we can be upgraded. So if you don't, if you want to know what she looks like, here's a picture I drew. So that's her in the pool. Um, I've seen her a lot through my life. Okay. And, um, I'm pretty sure now that I've been thinking about it and I'm also updating my next book, which is Heaven Exposed, because now, you know, she was with me when I was in heaven and I'm putting in instances now of what she's done with me in the past. So it gives you like that comprehensive understanding of what I've been through with her. Um, this lady is an, a guardian angel. She's not a spirit guide. OK, so today I want to go into what are spirit guides? What can they do? What can't they do? So, about, <clears throat> oh, it was a matter of weeks after I had this incident at the pool that a man came to my house and he was here for a development class. And as he walked into my house, he had a big white rat on his shoulder. So as he came to my door and I opened the door to let him in, I said, oh my God, I love your rat. And he said, what, 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 what? like this. And I thought, my God, he can't see this rat. So I looked at the rat and it looked straight me in the eyes and its mouth opened and it said, I may be a rat, but I am this man's protector. And I'm standing there like, because that's the first time I've ever seen a spirit guide. So I said to this man, oh my God, sorry, you can, like, I can see it, you can't. So I googled, what does a rat mean spiritually? And sure enough, that definition was very on point for what this man's troubles were. So let's go there with a spirit guide. Because at that point, I just thought I was just seeing, I, I actually said to him, have you had a rat that died? Because it's still with you. 
I don't know what it means because I didn't know at that point two years ago, why am I now seeing spirit guides? So it was a few months after that that a man came here again, not the same one. Another man came here and he said, um, I want to come over after work, blah, blah, blah. And when he turned up, because it was dark outside, he I opened the door and not only was he standing at my door, behind him, probably 15 feet tall, was a huge black grizzly bear. Its claws were like this long. Its teeth were like this long. And when it opened its mouth to talk to me, I could see its tonsils because its mouth was like this wide open. And I'm sitting there, oh, what do I do now? So I'm looking at this huge bear because he couldn't see him. The guy that was coming to my house, he couldn't see it. And I said, oh my gosh, most respect. I said, if you respect me, I'll respect you. You're welcome in my house. And this huge bear had to like cower down to get through my door. And it comes into my living room, curled up in a big ball and went to sleep. What the heck? It went to sleep. So I'm sitting there and I said to this man, oh my God, I've got to go outside and have a cigarette after this one. Pardon me. So I'm outside with this man and I said, look, I've got to go online because I never, um, I never like make a conscious memory of what these animals represent. So I've got to always, you know, it's fresh and new for every time I see somebody. And I said, I've got to Google what does a bear mean spiritually? What's a spirit animal? What's a spirit um, totem animal? There's there's a lot of different ways. You know, what does a bear spirit guide mean? That's the one I usually go for, okay? So we found out that this is very important to what this man is now going through in his life and why he came to me. So I'm sitting there having a smoke, talking to this man, and all I could hear through my house was... The bear was snoring in my lounge room. So anyway, the man, we had our discussion for about an hour. And he said, oh, okay, I've got to go now. So as he was walking to my front door, the bear woke up. Oh, like it's time to go. And followed him out the door. What? What? So I see spirit guides all the time. Um, I, I will go there, guys. There's two reasons. There's two clauses with me doing spirit guides. One, I respect them for who they are, which I'm going to tell you about in a moment. So, one, I always respect them who they are. And, two, and part of that clause is I understand that they're associated to that person. They don't know me. I'm a stranger. <laughs> Hello. Oh, they don't have to tell me who they are, right? Because they're not my spirit guide. I've got the big white owl, remember? So why do they have to show themselves to me? So it's their own free will if they do show themselves to me. The, so I ask them, you know, please be aware that your spirit guide may not show himself or herself or itself to me because it's for you, Okay. So that's the first clause that I tell anybody who says now to me, can you please connect with my spirit guide? The second warning is that I always gain consent, not just from the spirit guide, but from the person who wants me to see them. So, um, yeah, now when I do my readings, you know, there are a lot of people now asking me, oh, can you please tell me what my spirit guide is? So I say, well, the first clause of that is, do you understand that they may not come through for me because, hello, they don't know me. I'm a stranger. Who is this Linda woman? The second one is, I must gain your consent. But please be aware they may still not come through because why would they want to talk to me for anyway? Okay. So, spirit guides. Let's go there. They can be any form, any animal. Okay. So, I will go there with another story. A man came here. 
and we're talking development and he said oh can you please connect with my spirit guide and I said yeah sure we were sitting at the back of my yard so I said to him do you give me consent and I said please be aware it may not turn up a pterodactyl turned up in my backyard 30 foot long the wings were from where he was sitting in my backyard over the fence and into Roy's house you know the, the haunted house next door to me Roy it's been vacant now for five years its wing so one of its wings spanned up over the seven foot fence and it went into the next yard the other wing went all the way down my yard to nearly the clothesline so I said to this man oh my god look you've got a pterodactyl look at the size of its beak as I said that this thing opened its mouth this huge what I was calling a beak and it looked at me and he said I don't have a beak it's called a spout what a humbling moment for me <laughs> sitting there and and as he talked you know like an alligator or a crocodile as it's as its mouth opened like this its spout opened I could see its long tongue probably three foot long its tongue because it was quite long stout um, and it was talking English like the rat like the bear so the reason why I want to talk to you about this pterodactyl because it stayed here for a while so I was like examining it thinking my god you are prehistoric there's none of you around anymore I want to check you out so I said to the man do you mind if I go check out your pterodactyl so I got off my chair and he's looking at me like what the hell are you doing I went into my backyard and where the pterodactyl had his like wing sort of like bent I got in underneath it so I'm you know I'm on my fours on the ground and I'm looking up under at this wing looking at all the veins and the bones making the wing and that it's very very similar to a bat okay very very similar to the underlining of a bat okay like the Australian fruit bats that we have okay so I'm up under this wing lying on the ground and this man's looking at me like what the fudge and I'm sitting there saying well you can't see it but I can you know this big pterodactyl sitting here in my backyard of course I want to investigate it feel it so I put my hand up and where the veins were coming out of under its wings I actually felt the impression of it it was so, like my fingers I could feel it so you know if we look at our veins on our hands yes my hands are shot because you remember I've been in ICU when I died hence the scarring right remember so if you look at my scar on uh, my veins you know that you have a little bit of um, paper on there um, so you can see how they um, they raise up a little bit so I was playing I was feeling yeah I've got um, white paper in my fingernail sorry um, it's just white paper anyway so I'm feeling this indentation where the veins were how beautiful not only could I experience it but this huge magnificent prehistoric extinct creature <laughs> would let me do that <laughs> so pterodactyl was in my backyard so now I see spirit guides okay yes I've seen monks I've seen old ladies from Russia holding their big pa pans of potatoes I had a leprechaun here just the other day a leprechaun from Ireland it was saying it was talking in the Irish accent like this to be sure to be sure and then he was just blah, 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 all this jibber jibber jubby oh my god this little dwarfy you know and he actually had a um a pointed beard hang on I've got a picture I drew a picture when I was doing this ladies reading there it is that's what I drew so I try and draw your spirit guides now okay he had little glasses on little tiny little glasses with the wispy hair and this beard that came down into a point okay 
and he was only like three and a half foot tall. <laughs> this little dwarfy thing, a little from Ireland. So I see spirit guides, okay? So what are spirit guides? First of all, could they be deceased relatives that have died and they come back and join us and helping us through our existence? Generally not. That's not right. Because I classify myself as pretty educated and I've studied psychology and a bit of medicine here and there. And yeah, we've all got our skills, training and experience, right? We've all got that. But spirit guides know everything about everything. They're so advanced, not like just your deceased grandmother who knew how to make a cake. She knew how to sew clothes. She may know a little bit about tinkering with cars or schoolwork or something. So spirit guides are not deceased relatives. They're highly evolved because they know so much about all. All. <clears throat> okay. They keep us on our life path. So generally, spirit guides, they're assigned to us before our birth, before our birth, and they stay with us for our whole existence until the day we die. So they keep us on our life path because, hello, we have life paths, we have life contracts, and we also have life lessons. Yeah, are you following me? So if my life path is... To go through my first relationship, hello, this is my personal view, my personal experience here. I had to go through that first experience with my first husband, whereby I left him at a certain time when I had that intuition to leave. Why did I leave him at that exact moment? Because what happens with spirit guides is they create those synchronicities. You know, one event leading into the next and you just think, my God, how ironic did that happen right when that happened? I was in that right moment at the right time to get that. You know what I'm talking about, those synchronicities, right? So they give us those synchronicities or those signs to keep us on our path. I had to leave my first husband at the time when I did. So I would try go over to North Carolina and marry Mark the American because I had to die. It was part of my life contract. I had to die in 2001. So then I could talk about it now in the 2020s and beyond. Okay. So they keep us on that path. If we're going to get in our car today to go to work, and there's a fatal car accident. They will prevent us from going there and being part of that horrific traumatic incident. If it's not in our destiny, okay? If it's not in our destiny, think about that. Because, you know, how often do we drive down the road and you think, oh my God, for some reason, I've just had to go that way today. I don't usually go that way. I'll go that way. I want to go that way. And you sit there and you think, why did I go that way before? But I heard nothing happen. You know, sometimes we might hear that there was a fatal car accident there. And thank God we weren't in it and delayed or worse situation. But most times we will never know. And this is a mind blow, guys. We will never know why we didn't go that way. Because we weren't there to create that instance. Okay? That's what I fully believe in, okay? So they keep us on our life path. They also give us opportunities to go back onto our life path and to learn our life lessons. A person who works every day going to the office, they may have some sort of physical injury occur where now they have to work from home, but now they've got the opportunity to do double the work. So they'll create that injury or that accident to keep us at home, to get us back onto that life path of doing what we're supposed to be doing. Do you understand that? Because I hope you do, because that's a big one. Okay, so whenever something happens to us, guys, whether it's good or bad, always think of it as an opportunity. 
because it's reconnecting us back to our life paths to further our life contracts and to learn our life lessons okay so deceased relatives aren't spirit guides spirit guides aren't the same as living beings okay humans i should say they're more events more evolved they can see the universe in that blink because there's no time or space Ooh, that's a doozy if you've never heard this one before because when i died in 2001 and i went home for like five years there was no time and no space if you want a copy of heaven exposed please just wait because it's about to get um an extended versions coming out okay so please know guys spirit guides are highly evolved heavenly celestial bodies universal energies and the best part is they know us so intimately they knew us before we were born they knew our whole lives they know every characteristic behavior and idiosyncrasy that we possess and they still watch us and guide us so always give thanks to your spirit guides okay so i'm not expecting everybody to be on the same path as me because we all have different paths hello my past just changed because now i see spirit guides so how do we see our own one you can contact me and book a session um and i'll connect with your spirit guide for you that's an easy one but how do we do the work to see our own spirit guides so here's some tools for you guys first one get really comfortable like you're going to meditate you want no distractions no outside noises so turn off the tv make sure no one's going to come turn off your phone sit calmly like we do when we're going to talk to our deceased relatives i prefer to sit in a mirror because this is how i saw my owl the first time okay i was sitting in front of a mirror i just put up a mirror in front of me sat nice and calmly and i was thinking all my happy thoughts happy thoughts because we must be in a good vibrational state which i'll talk about in a minute and all you've got to do is don't look directly at you look off to the side so if you're looking at me now see how i can see my roses over here out of the peripheral that's how i see them so if i'm going to see someone else's spirit guides i'll look at something like a fence post or a chair and i look out of my peripheral that's where i see them so in front of a mirror you sit very calmly and all you got to do is have that intention of wanting to talk to them have that intention so first of all how do we get an intention believe it's going to happen secondly think about what you'll do when you see them why do i want to see my spirit guide is it just my ego that wants it so take your ego out of the equation i want to connect with my spirit guide so i know which path i'm going on i want to know my spirit guide so i can talk to them and give them praise and grace and give them that thanks of god for being with me i want to talk to my spirit guides so then i know i'm not alone even though i'm in lockdown now with all these isolations going on around the planet i am not alone i am united i am in a, in that sovereignty sovereignty google that word and see what it means universally i'm in that sovereignty where i am connected and i am reaching out to be that connected and i want to be that being who is spiritual and furthering my own awareness and consciousness so have that intention and then all you've got to do is ask them to come through 
Don't be alarmed if you see them. And don't be alarmed if you don't. Because some of us aren't meant to. Remember, we've all got life lessons, we've all got life contracts, and we've all got a life path. So sometimes we're not supposed to connect with our spirit guides. And if you do have trouble, contact me, linda at lindaray.info. Okay? So I hope that that's helped you all today, guys. Um, gives you a little bit more insight on who I am and what I do. Um, yeah. The last thing I want to say, remember I said before about raising up your vibration and being in your happy space. Raise your vibration up. Be happy. Don't allow fear to overtake our lives. Laugh, dance, sing. Be happy. And if you do want tools on how to raise your vibration, I've got a great book. It's called Heal to Success. It's on my um, website. It goes into all the negativity we do so we can release all that crap out of our lives. So then we can bring in all that goodness, self-love, self-appreciation, self-respect, and most of all, how to know ourselves. Because if we don't know ourselves, how can we ever connect with a spirit guide? Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this one today, guys. Talk to you all soon. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.